Hey everybody, welcome to another model building workshop and today we're looking at the Ford GPA Jeep. This is the uh, US Amphibian quarter ton 4x4 truck. Yeah, the Jeep as a boat. <laughs> so this allowed the uh, a Jeep to go from the uh, from the water <laughs> up onto the beaches and inland or you can cross rivers with it whatever you need a little amphibious car to do so this is one of those unique vehicles kind of like the Schwimm wagon and some other stuff like the DK, DUKW the bigger truck version which uh, some of you uh, people have visited cities like Boston know those as the duck tour boats you know there's amphibious guys that can go through the water and then up, up on land you know now they're using it as uh, tourist things so anyway let's have a look here she is. It's the Tamiya kit. It's been around a while. Fun kit to build, as most of these old Tamiya kits are. Fun little Jeep. Or as it was nicknamed, the Seep. A sea going Jeep. Love the nickname Leaky on this thing. Show you inside the dash there. So it's a very small, compact little kit. Doesn't have a very big parts count. Let's take a look at it, shall we? Here's the instruction sheet here. Kind of typical of some of these uh, older India car kits where it's just one one sheet. You know, and it's kind of typical. I get that so you can see it without the thing going through. Not a lot to this at all. has a nice bolt like hull to work with so makes that easy a few panels here and there most of your detail on this is going to be the interior you know the floorboards the seats things like that that's where most of it is really because you know the hull is pretty much one giant tub with some pieces on top you know one glass piece and I guess the fun with this is going to be all the gear you can put in it if you want to. I've got mine empty right now. So you can see what it looks like as is. But you can certainly load that thing up with all kinds of gear and gizmos. You know, and they give you quite a bit of different bedrolls. You know, your usual bedrolls and jerry cans. You can load this thing up with stuff. Uh, there's a driver figure, which I'm working on here. You know, you get the idea. You have another figure, too. Like an NCO with a Tommy gun. Let's take a look at the painting options. Not too many. There's the the figure painting, although it's weird that they uh, they show you a guy with a life jacket where they don't offer you that figure. I don't know what the point of that is, but you know the guy with the life jacket isn't even in this kit, so <laughs> it's kind of strange. But you have some choices here. You have a couple of U.S. Army ones, and you have one Marine Corps version. down the bottom just depends if you like the star in the circle or not one's with a nice stripe that's the one from the Marine Corps so it says here that most of these vehicles ended up uh, serving in the European theater 
and not so much for the Pacific Theater. Well, let's take a look at some of the history of this. So, the idea was floated around in 1941, and production of these things was started up in uh, around April of 42. That's when they uh, started, and they cranked out about 12,775 of these things by the end of the war. Yeah, most went to the Western Front. And a number of them were uh, sent to the Russians uh, for their use, and they became they were um, they were very handy in the the assault over the Dnieper River in 1944. If I'm pronouncing it correctly, so the Russians used a lot of them through the Lend-Lease program, and they continued working on derivatives of that uh, well past the war, and made their own version using the GAZ or GAZ uh, car series. So that's something that they had worked on. Um, although it looks like uh, from testing that they figured the German Schwimmwagen was actually better than this. But this had uh, a lot of fans. And, and it does mention uh, in the write-up here of an Australian engineer named Ben Carlin. He and his wife took one of these GPAs and they successfully traveled across the Atlantic Ocean in one you can imagine that and then across the Sahara Desert and into Europe and they did that as something to do apparently that they did that in 1950 wow that's ambitious huh um, so yeah as I said these things were nicknamed either the seep and some were called uh, Ike's invasion taxis so they had a couple of different nicknames so looking at the history here it seemed like um, a few different companies were uh, vying for the contract to produce the seagoing Jeep, and Marmon Harrington was one. Uh, Phantom, which you came up with the idea for the Jeep originally, was too small a company to really even enter the competition. Uh, and then Ford, of course. So, what seems to have happened is that the. Let's see. Mormon Harrington lost the production order because their production capacity was also limited, kind of like Bantam. And Ford ended up taking over and just, you know, working on a, their design, but kind of basing it still on the Mormon Harrington design. So, yeah, that's kind of how that worked out. And there you have a very brief history, although they give you quite a bit more here. There's a lot more detail, which is actually quite good. Not that I'm saying they aren't good, um, but that's a pretty good story there, including the story about the Australian engineer who decided to go around the world in one of those, practically. Um, yeah. So there you have it. I'll give me a few more looks at, you know, small little vehicle. Again, not much to build. This is a fairly straightforward, simple build. I would think a younger, inexperienced modeler could probably do this. You know, painting is pretty simple. The only little details you have would be the seats and the gear and the tires is about it. I mean, so it's, it's not bad for a novice. Anyway, that's today's look at something in the model building workshop. And for those of you curious, I'm just wearing this Lobos hat. You know, as a salute to my friends from down that part of the country. <laughs> so I just kind of went there as a tourist, visiting some friends, thus the hat. Okay, we will see you guys on the next episode. Stay tuned, keep on building. All right, thanks, and bye.